Hi, everyone. This is Mark Zowell, co-founder of AcceptU. Excited to be here today to do our Write Like an Expert uh, analysis for Dartmouth Tuck. And um, before I jump into um, this presentation, just wanted to take care of two quick uh, housekeeping items. The first is um, you're welcome to download a copy of this presentation um, from our website. The address is up on your screen. It's learnmore.com acceptyou.com slash tuck. Um, we also would invite all of you that are with us here live today or, or viewing this uh, presentation in the future to sign up for a complimentary admissions assessment with one of AcceptU's former MBA admissions officers. All of our um, counselors here at AcceptU are former MBA admissions officers from top 20 business schools. Um, and we can give you a, a good kind of evaluation of your profile and your candidacy, strengths, weaknesses, potential schools of interest, and you can sign up um, right on our website, learnmore.acceptu.com slash webinar. So as I mentioned before, AcceptU is an admissions counseling group comprised entirely of former MBA admissions officers from top 25 business schools. Um, we have gone out um, into the MBA admissions world and recruited these admissions officers who have such um, intimate knowledge of how admissions decisions are made and had them come join our team. And these counselors um, then work with our clients one-on-one um, -on -one virtually, so by phone, Skype, and email, um, through all aspects of the admissions process. We help our clients with determining schools to apply to, as well as strategy with the packaging or the positioning of their application, helping them with their essays, letters of recommendation, their resume, interview preparation. Um, our counseling has helped hundreds of applicants gain a competitive advantage and, and place them into the business schools of their, of their choice. And more than 90% of the clients that we work with are actually accepted to one of their top three choices. So we have a very strong um, track record with our placement and really can credit this to um, the fact that all of our counselors are former MBA admissions officers who have this type of knowledge that, that really gives our, our clients um, an advantage in this, in this process. Just to give you some um, background on myself as well as my colleague, um, Stephen Friedfeld, who is uh, my co-founder here at AcceptU. Um, I'm the author of Untangling the Ivy League. It's an admissions guidebook focused um, solely on gaining entry to um, Ivy League schools. Um, I have a bachelor's from Cornell University as well as an MBA from UNC Chapel Hill. While I was at UNC Chapel Hill, I, I worked very closely um, with an admissions advisory board helping to evaluate application essays, um, helped to come up with a new application essay question for for applicants, um, and I've also conducted um, interviews for Cornell for about 10 years now. Um, the counselors that we have here at AcceptU have um, admissions experience at a pretty broad range of schools. We have counselors that have previously worked in admissions at Columbia University, Cornell University, um, New York University, um, UCLA, USC, Stanford. Um, we match up our clients with these former admissions officers based on the schools that they're interested in applying to as well as their career interests, their personality, and then of course the availability of our counselors. So today we're going to focus on um, uh, Tuck and we're going to break down this uh, presentation into four kind of broad topics. Um, I want to start with just some discussion around um, your goals with the Tuck application essays. Um, we need to kind of get a sense first of what you're going to be trying to achieve with these essays and why these essays are such an important part to your application um, before we really jump into um, the application essay analysis. Um, but I also want to talk about um, how you should be strategically approaching the writing process. So um, you have to do some amount of, of introspection and, and reflection um, bef before you actually sit down to start writing the essays. And so I'll, I'll walk through the process that we typically go through with, with our clients here at AcceptU, and, and hopefully that'll give you a sense of um, the best way to really approach this, this writing process. Um, we will do uh, then uh, an analysis of both of um, Tuck's essay questions. We'll also talk about the optional essay. And then we will wrap up with um, some tips and guidance with how to now get started with your with your essays for Tuck and for the other um, uh, business schools that you're you're planning on applying to. So let's start with um, what your goals should be with the Tuck.
application essays. Um, your uh, application essays to talk into other business schools are, are really quite important because the the admissions office wants to learn more about you um, as an applicant. They want to learn more about your interests, um, your your background, um, and what makes you a unique uh, candidate. Um, admissions officers have um, an application to really gain all of this information from, but when you actually look at the application, much of the application itself is really just data points. Um, so they're looking at your transcript, they're looking at your GMAT score, they're looking at um, your work experience, um, but they're not really hearing from you directly. And um, the application essays are really your primary tool um, to communicate directly with the admissions office. And the application essays are also one of the few opportunities that you have to have some flexibility with what your um, showing um, admissions officers because when it comes to data points you're simply providing them what they're asking for. Um, when it comes to your essays you can provide them anything that you want. Your essays also are going to give a voice to your application. Admissions officers want to get a sense of who you are as, as a person, um, who your uh, kind of what drives you, what your personal interests are, um, and so they want to almost hear you in the application. Admissions officers, at the end of the day, are assessing you um, and, and trying to get a sense of whether you are compelling, whether you're likable, whether you're someone that they would want to have on their, on their campus. So you want to have a voice that really helps to build a connection with an admissions officer. Um, so focusing on, on establishing that voice um, is, is a really uh, important goal with your application essays. Strong writing also shows a level of thoughtfulness and analysis and communication skills that admissions officers are looking to identify an applicant. So it's, it's beyond just what the content of the essay is. In, in many ways, they are evaluating or assessing your writing abilities, um, as well as your um, abilities to figure out what you should highlight um, to them. So there's kind of this like um, deeper level within the application essay review um, where they're assessing, is this an applicant who has um, the writing abilities and capabilities and communication abilities to be successful in our, in our program? And does this, does this applicant understand what he or she should be highlighting to us? So that's kind of a, a, an interesting um, way to, to think about these application essays. Um, the way in which applications are, are typically reviewed is that admissions officers are looking first at your academic qualifications. Um, they're looking at your GMAT, they're looking at your, um, uh, your GPA. Um, beyond those um, academic qualifications, assuming that you have what they're looking for, they're then digging in much deeper um, into why they should admit you over another, say, academically qualified applicant or even an applicant that is even has stronger academic qualifications than you. So um, your essays are your best tool to really stand out from other academically qualified applicants, and they're one of the few tools that you have. Um, the other tools, of course, resume, letters of recommendation, um, your interview if you're conducting one, those can be supportive and complementary, um, but they're not the strongest um, a tool that you have um, in terms of helping you to, to stand out from, from other applicants. Finally, and we'll touch on this when we get into the optional essay, um, your essays can also help you address any potential weaknesses, extenuating circumstances, red flags um, in your application or in your profile. Um, here at Accept You, we think it's really important that our clients proactively address any red flags um, or weaknesses in their application. Of course, you don't want to draw um, undue attention to a weakness that um, admissions officers really aren't going to dwell on. But if you have something in your background or in your, in your application that needs or warrants some explanation, it's in your best interest to make that explanation clear. 
Um, if you don't explain certain weaknesses in your profile or in your um, application, um, admissions officers can draw their own conclusions. And, and trust me, the conclusions that they draw are not going to be anywhere near as favorable as um, the conclusions that you will provide them in an optional essay or in one of your other essays. So um, for that reason, it, it is important to kind of utilize the essays as a, as a way to address any of these concerns that they might have um, in the review process. If you have questions that come up over the course of this uh, presentation, feel free to um, chat them over. And I'm, I'm going to set aside a, a fair amount of time at the, at the end of this presentation to answer as, as many questions as, um, as time will, will allow. So we talked um, initially now on, on what your goal should be with the Tuck essays, why the essays are important. Now I want to spend um, a little bit of time also discussing how you can strategically approach the, this writing process. Because um, you do need to take some initial steps before you sit down in front of your computer to start drafting these, these essays. So we take a... Um, uh, a pretty structured approach to um, essay writing with our clients here um, at Accept You. We we like to spend some initial time on uh, self-reflection with our clients. Um, there are some really important questions that you as an applicant to business school should be uh, thinking about um, even before you sit down to begin working on your application materials. First is, um, why do I want to pursue an MBA? And it sounds like such um, an obvious question to, to ask, um, but it's surprising the number of applicants who cannot clearly articulate their interest in going to business school. If you want to go um, to business school to talk or to another top business school, you, you need to be able to have very clear and defined career goals. Um, Admissions officers, in, in many ways, are assessing whether your goals are realistic and attainable given your prior work experience as well as the resources that are going to be, be available to you as a student. Your career goals need to show also some progression in your career. Um, you need to kind of show them how you'll be able to leverage or utilize your prior skills that you've developed in your career um, in your post-grad career. Um, and when it comes to very broadly breaking down an interest in going to business school, uh, applicants are falling into either career changers or career accelerators. If you're a career accelerator, you are looking to stay within your same industry or functional role um, coming out of business school. For career accelerators, it can be a little bit harder to justify their interest in going to business school. Um, you're essentially saying, my career has stagnated to some extent. Um, and I need an MBA in order to further my career. But you need to be thinking about if an admissions officer evaluates your, your application and says, well, if you just keep doing what you're doing, won't you be able to achieve the same goal? There needs to be some sort of value add from, from the business school's perspective um, beyond just helping you achieve your career goal faster. There needs to be something more than that. Most applicants are career changers, again, either changing their industry, changing their function, or changing both. And um, for career changers, you do need to show that type of progression such that you're uh, able to justify your interest in changing careers. So if you want to go into, if you've been working in finance and now you want to go into marketing, the question is why? What can you point to either personally or professionally that you can use to justify your, your career um, interest. Um, similarly, with industry change, if you've been working, say, in oil and gas and you want to go work in consumer packaged goods, it's, you, you need to be able to say, well, here's why. So career changing, it's, it's a bit easier to justify your interest in going to business school because in all likelihood you would not be able to make this type of career change without an MBA, but you do need to think about justifying why you're interested in what you say that you're interested in going into. Once you've kind of established um, your interest in going to business school and what and your and the value of the degree, um, you want to next talk about or think about why this particular program is a good fit for you. Now, Dartmouth um, is a unique program, um, but there are many similarities and overlap between, say, its strengths as well as the strengths of other top ten or top fifteen business schools. 
So you really need to dig into um, talk in particular and see why is this school the right fit for me. And a good way to evaluate this is, um, is to say, what can Tuck provide me that other business schools just cannot? And you want to start to come up with a list of, of some of these um, factors that are really uh, driving your, your interest in that program. Because admissions officers, they don't want to see generic essays about what their program is going to provide if, in reality, um, any other top 20 business school could provide you with the same thing. A good way for you to, um, and it's something that we advise our clients on, is to, to demonstrate this amount of interest and to do this type of research is to go above simply, say, going to the program's website and, and looking around um, for 15 minutes or, or for 30 minutes. If at all possible, go and visit um, Tuck and demonstrate your, your strong interest in the program by going and visiting. Now, if time or distance or cost does not allow you to go and visit the, the school, it's not going to be held against you. But if you do have an opportunity to, it can be a very compelling way to do additional research about why that this program is such a good fit for you. And on top of that, um, show them that you're a serious applicant um, who's investing time and, and money into the, into the process. Um, if you can't go and visit, then certainly contacting the admissions office, meeting admissions officers while they um, uh, are touring around the country, um, talking to current students or alumni or professors, just doing more than just going onto this, the school website um, is going to be a good way for you to uh, start to come up with a list of why you're so interested in, in talk um, compared to other um, MBA programs. Finally, um, and, and it might be the most important um, question that you need to pose to yourself is, how will I be able to contribute in ways that other applicants won't? We talked earlier about uh, the uh, standing out from other academically qualified applicants. So you have to consider what makes you different or unique. Um, look at your professional experience. Look at your personal interests. Look at your um, post-grad career interests. Um, look at the diversity of your background. How um, the other another area that you could potentially contribute in ways that other applicants uh, won't, won't be able to is the number of years of work experience that you have, especially for obviously applicants that have more than the average. Um, so there are um, some some tools that you can utilize here that um, will help you differentiate yourself from from other applicants. And differentiation is really the the name of the game. That's, that is the key uh, to gaining admission. Um, when you're applying to these top 20 business schools, including Tuck, um, you know, on average they're admitting 10% of applicants, 15% of applicants. It's, it's, it's so, so competitive to get admitted to these types of schools. And you have to put yourself in the shoes of an admissions officer. Why should you be admitted over another applicant who looks just like you? And it's all about the ways in which you'll be able to contribute. And, and so it, it falls back to those, those differentiators, those key differentiators as, as a means for helping you stand out from the applicant pool. We generally advise our clients to come up with a list of, um, say, three to five key differentiators. And these differentiators are going to form the foundation to your Tuck essays. Um, it is these differentiators that you're then going to try to weave into your application essays um, that you're going to use as examples in your, in your essays. And we'll talk more about um, incorporating these differentiators into your essays when we get into um, the essay analysis in a, in a couple of slides. Um, but I do want to um, just uh, very briefly talk a little bit more about um, your differentiators because um, without these, you really aren't going to have much of an essay. And without an essay, you're not going to have much of a chance of getting admitted to a program like Tuck. So um, when you're looking at your uh, and considering your, your differentiators, um, many applicants focus solely on their professional differentiators. Uh, they're saying, well, I'm applying to business school. And business school is about business. And so I should really think about, from a business standpoint, what makes me unique. And while I wouldn't necessarily disagree with that, I would encourage you all to also think about personal differentiators. 
um, there are going to be many applicants that have very similar professional backgrounds as you, um, just given the size of the applicant pool. They're also going to have many of the same accomplishments as you professionally. So personal differentiators, um, because you are you and no one else is really truly like you as a person, can be um, even more compelling um, in terms of differentiation. And when you think about um, personal differentiators, admissions officers also tend to have more of a connection with personal differentiators as well as, as opposed to professional. Um, because they just read so many professional accomplishments versus personal differentiators, somewhat unique to the applicant and allows them to really get a sense of who the applicant is and where the applicant is coming from and almost in some ways envision the applicant as, an, as a person as opposed to just an applicant um, or, or a bunch of data points on a, on a piece of paper. With your differentiators, um, let's um, think a little bit about uh, first professional accomplishments. So, Professional accomplishments, you want to be able to quantify your accomplishments. What, um, what has really made the most impact on the organizations that, that, you've, worked, um, that you've worked at? Um, you also, with your professional differentiators, can think about uh, perhaps some non-traditional or more unique prior work experience. Um, you can also think about less traditional future career interests. So if your career interests are in areas that are typically um, less popular or underrepresented um, among business schools like Tuck, so for example, marketing or entrepreneurship or supply chain management versus management consulting or finance, which are um, two of the most popular and tend to be overrepresented career interest, then that can be some way for you to stand out because admissions officers need to build some diversity professionally within the class. They can't have an entire class of students that are interested in, in say, finance. So think professionally about some of these differentiators. And then personally, um, whether it's geographic diversity, ethnic diversity, socioeconomic diversity, gender, um, other diversity, the way you're upbringing, there are a lot of um, personal ways in which you can um, stand out from other applicants and you want to find a balance between your personal and your professional. Leadership can fall into either of those categories. We've seen clients of ours who have really outstanding leadership um, uh, professionally. We've also seen clients of ours that have really amazing leadership personally, um, whether in organizations that they're involved in outside of work or just um, having overcome perhaps some hardships um, personally. So leadership can really cut, um, cut both ways. It's important to get feedback from others when you're coming up with your list of differentiators. You want to talk with those um, who know you well because um, their feedback will better inform you. It's sometimes, it can be sometimes difficult to look at yourself and say, why am I different, versus to speak with others who might be able to give you um, some, some feedback or, or some uh, outside um, perspective. Um, you can also look at your past uh, performance reviews. You can look at prior um, professional evaluations. You don't necessarily want to ask um, your family members. You, you want to try to find um, less biased um, sources because, of course, your family members are going to be not really um, negative in any way. So um, try to find those that aren't going to have that type of, of bias in, in speaking with you about what you, what you feel um, will help you stand out from, from other applicants. So we have a sense now of, of um, the introspection and the process that you need to go through there. Um, you know that you need to come up with some differentiators, personal or professional. Um, now let's talk a little bit about the values or characteristics that um, Tuck is looking for in applicants. And actually Tuck is um, quite open and, and transparent with with the its it calls its principal factors um, that it, it's looking for in applicants. First and, and foremost is um, academic excellence. They're looking for leadership, which obviously we just spent a fair amount of time discussing. They're looking for accomplishments, interpersonal skills. So that's more falling on the personal side with the differentiators. Diversity of background and experience. Obviously, we touched on that as well and then a global mindset. So 
they, Tuck says there's no formula for ad admission to their, to their program. Um, first and foremost, you have to have the academics. If you don't have um, the academic um, qualifications, there's very little that can be done um, with the other pieces of your application that will compensate for that. Um, you, you, you really do need to have um, the, the academic qualifications to be a strong candidate at, this, at, at a program like Tuck. Now, assuming that you do have the academic qualifications and it's a self-selecting pool of applicants, or at least it tends to be, so most of the applicants have about what they need with their academic qualifications, it's really those next five factors that are going to determine whether you, um, whether you get admitted. Um, and it just so happens that the way in which um, you can address these factors and, and highlight um, these factors is through your application essays. And so that's why, going back to that very first slide, your application essays are so important because they ultimately are going to determine whether you are an applicant that they want to have compared to other applicants that look very similar to you and who would do very well in that program academically. But it comes down to who do we want to have to build diversity within the class, to create a really enriching and, and compelling um, uh, learning environment, um, and, and your essays are, are the tool that you should be utilizing to, to achieve this. So you know your strengths and your differenti differentiators, excuse me, and you now know what Tuck is looking for, those six factors or those five factors beyond academic excellence, and you're now on the right path to writing your, your essays for Tuck. Um, but before you begin just typing away, um, there's one last um, note that we, we like to make with our clients, and that's you don't want to write what you think admissions officers want you to write. Um, and, it's, and it happens um, quite frequently um, that applicants are trying to put together essays that they think admissions officers want to read. Um, and, and what ends up happening with these essays is that applicants come across in a really um, inauthentic and, and phony way. And there's nothing worse than um, an essay that doesn't seem to align with the applicant. It just comes across as, as, as a little contrived, and it does not help in any way. Uh, Tuck actually um, very honestly and openly talks about um, your voice within the essays. And they say, remember, the essays are your opportunity to share with us who you are beyond the numbers and the resume. So reflect, take your time, be genuine. You want to think carefully about your content as well as delivery. You need to communicate clearly in your voice, not who you think we want you to be. And most importantly, answer the question. Um, you are asked. So be real, be someone to these admissions officers. Um, it's, this is the role of, you, of your essays. Um, with all these other data points and um, very few other opportunities to uh, come across in a, in a really likable, interesting, compelling way, um, making clear the types of contributions that you'll make as a student, that's the ultimate goal of your, of your essays with, with Tuck. So now I want to um, get into the essay questions for this year, now that you've got a better understanding of the approach that you should be taking with the essays. And I really would encourage you all to, to take that approach with your, with your essays. Don't just jump into the, into the essays. I know that um, there's this real tendency to want to just get into the writing process. But you have to, if you don't take those initial steps of the process, the writing is going to ultimately end up taking you much longer because you're not going to be doing what you should be doing with your writing. Um, so invest, the time, invest that time at the outset. Um, get your thought process where it needs to be. Then you can start to, to jump into drafting your, your application essays. So let's start just with this year's instructions. Um, please respond fully but concisely to the following essay questions. There are no right or wrong answers. We encourage applicants to limit the length of their responses to 500 words for each essay. Please double space your responses. Um, that underlining, that emphasis is mine, um, but it is important to follow instructions. And you would be surprised at the number of applicants who do not follow the instructions, um, which is a real problem um, because it's one, as I said before, one of the things that admissions officers 
are assessing with your essays is not just the content, but also your writing abilities and also your ability to follow instructions. So answer the question and, and make sure that you are not straying too far from what they're looking for in these um, application essays. Um, there were some changes this year um, uh, to the application essays from last year. There's actually one less essay to write. Um, previously last year they had a question on failure or, or setback and that was removed this year. And while as applicants you might be saying, yes, I don't have to write one more essay, um, it, it is uh, not necessarily all a good thing. Yes, you don't have to write one more essay, but it does mean that you have 500 fewer words to really convey your interest and your differentiators to the admissions office. So you now need to um, squeeze in um, as much as you would have hoped to in, in 500 fewer words. So it's actually, while it's nice not having to write an additional essay, it's a little bit more challenging because it just makes these, these two essays um, that much more um, important. And then the other two questions um, remain the same, more or less. There's some uh, new nuances in the in the wording, and um, but for the most part, they're asking the the same thing. So just to start with um, the the first uh, question, um, which is prompting you about um, your your goals. Uh, Tuck is asking why is an MBA a critical next step towards your short term and long term career goals. Why is Tuck the best fit MBA for you and your goals, and why are you the best fit for Tuck? Now you see um, why it's so important to go through those initial steps of this of this um, writing process. Because if you just jump right into this, you're going to be floundering around. You need to um, invest that time initially. So as we um, discussed uh, earlier in this in this presentation, um, first step: identify what are your career goals. Your career goals, as I've said before, they need to show a clear, logical progression of your career interests. Um, your career goals need to be somewhat aspirational. Um, what I mean by that is you should not be able to achieve your career goals without an MBA, but your career goals also need to be realistic and attainable. If your career goals are so aspirational, admissions officers are going to be concerned about the likelihood that you're going to be able to achieve those goals. Now, the reason that that's important is twofold. The first is that uh, many business school rankings assess business schools on the percentage of graduates who have full-time employment, say, three months or six months out. So if your goal is not attainable, um, it means that you're not going to be one of those graduates who has a full-time job three months or six months out, and it potentially could negatively impact their, their ranking. And then the second is they just want to have an alignment of expectations in terms of what you'll be able to achieve. If you come into their program thinking, I'm going to be able to achieve this with an MBA, and they feel like there's no chance that you're going to be able to, they, don't, they just don't want to have you there. You're just going to be um, a student that's a little bit more difficult um, in terms of career placement, and uh, you just don't, they just don't really want to deal with that, to be, to be completely frank. Um, you want to be um, as specific as possible with your career goals. Now, there's definitely a fine line between being specific and being overly specific and pigeonholing you into just one potential role or function within an industry. So be specific um, and be as specific as possible, but don't be so specific that if you don't get that job, um, admissions officers are wondering, well, what else is he or she going to be interested in, in going into? Um, admissions officers are looking for a connection between your interests and their program. So if you're looking at Tuck, um, and this goes back to um, one of the first couple of slides of this presentation, what makes that school unique? Um, and hopefully one of the things that makes Tuck unique among the schools that you're interested in applying to is the strength of their career concentration or their career placement in the career that you are interested in. Um, also, as I, as I mentioned before, consider potential career goals, um, perhaps in underrepresented career areas um, that help you differentiate yourself from other applicants. If you, if you want to go into finance or management consulting, that's fine. But if you're um, looking at other areas, recognize that that might be helpful to you in, in standing out from other uh, applicants. 
once you get your career goals defined, now think about why you need an MBA in order to achieve your career goals. And I'm trying to just break down this question into um, four steps so that you're able to cover it in, in the 500 or so words that you have. Um, when you're looking to justify why you need an MBA in order to achieve your career goals, we typically find that applicants are looking at either building quantitative skills or qualitative skills. Quantitative skills, finance, accounting, hard quant analytical skills. Um, qualitative skills, often overlooked by applicants, are, we would say, you know, softer uh, business-related skills. Leadership, management, communication, um, those, are, those are also really um, important skills to, to gain. So try to think about a mix of both quantitative as well as qualitative skills um, as you're looking to justify why you need an MBA in order to achieve your career goals. Next, think um, very specifically about why Tuck is the best fit for you. It's something that I've, I've probably mentioned now three or four times, um, but I, it's just you can't um, overemphasize the importance of, of this piece. What makes Tuck unique among its peers? If you're just going onto the school website, you're probably not going to get a good uh, real kind of inside perspective on that. That's why going and visiting, talking to current students, talking to admissions officers, try to get real insight um, into um, the strengths of the program, why other students have chosen that program. When it comes to this essay, you can even highlight the points of contact that you've had with the ad admissions officer with students. You could say, in my conversation with this current student, um, and even name the student, I I've found that your program is going to be a great fit because of X, Y, and Z. You don't want to just use generic reasons. Um, you can consider the strength of the academics, the career concentration, clubs, but also consider other perhaps more personal preferences around location, size, alumni network. Uh, what we found is that many of these um, top business schools, Tuck included, their career uh, placement is typically strongest in the immediate geographic region. Now, obviously, Tuck is not in a major urban environment, but more generally, say, the Northeast is, is where um, its, its graduates are ending up. Um, so if you want to work and stay in the, in the Northeast, um, then it, its career placement in that particular area would probably be a big draw for you. If you want to go to school, say, on the West Coast, then consider that the career placement is probably going to be strongest on the West Coast, and that's something that you can use as a justification in terms of your interest in, in talk or other business schools that you're applying to. And then finally, consider why you are a good fit for Tuck. And I think that here's a great opportunity for you to incorporate a, a differentiator or two that you previously um, identified. Um, think about how you will contribute to Tuck. Um, if you're going to use an example, um, I, I, considering the length of this essay, uh, I would suggest um, very quickly trying to cut to the chase. Um, use a sentence or two to describe the situation and what you were looking to achieve. Use another sentence or two to talk about any challenges you faced. And then use probably the, the, the largest piece of your example should be um, how you'll be able to draw on this experience um, as a student at Tuck. It's about um, your, your leveraging this experience and, and being able to utilize this experience in a way that will help you contribute. And examples are allowing admissions officers to see how you've previously worked in the past. And then the expectation, of course, is based on how you have addressed, say, a challenge in the past. Um, you will address a challenge like that um, at Tuck in the future or in your career in, in the future. And then that, that last bullet on this slide is just about um, the ways in which you can um, really familiarize your, yourself with the program and, and your fit with the school. SA2 um, focuses on, on leadership. Uh, Tuck is prompting you as applicant to tell us about your most meaningful leadership experience and what role you played. What did you learn about your own individual strengths and weaknesses through this experience? As we discussed um, earlier, your leadership experience, as with your differentiators, can be either professional or personal. Now, if you have um, a personal leadership experience, I would um, suggest utilizing it here in, in SA2 um, to balance 
for the more professional focus of SA1. You don't have a lot of um, wiggle room with SA1 to incorporate your personal differentiators. Um, it, it is a pretty uh, strongly worded professional essay, um, but here you have some um, you have some opportunity to talk more generally about leadership. So if you have a personal um, differentiator, leadership related, of course, then this is a, a good opportunity for you to um, incorporate it. And as I said earlier, you want to, if possible, bring in some personal differentiators into your application essays because admissions officers will allow, will, will get a better sense of who you are as a person. and in all likelihood, your personal differentiators or your personal leadership will be um, quite different than every other applicant. As opposed to professional leadership, it's, it's probably likely that there are going to be other applicants that have done something very similar, if not something identical to what you're highlighting in this essay. Sometimes we get feedback from our clients about not having leadership. Um, it's, it's important to keep in mind that leadership is not necessarily managing, um, nor is it necessarily about what you have done. Um, leadership can be more broadly defined as what you've um, been able to achieve with the help of others. It, and it's not, um, like I said before, it's not necessarily managing others. Um, leadership is, is not um, managing. It can be, but it's not necessarily. Um, and it can also be about what others have been able to achieve because of you. What do I mean um, you know, by, by all of this? Well, everyone can be a leader, and it's just a matter of, of figuring out what are the leadership qualities that admissions officers are, are looking to identify. Um, probably most important is uh, teamwork or uh, collaboration with others. Um, it makes sense that this would be the most important leadership quality, because think about your uh, role as a student. It's collaborating with your classmates, it's in study groups, it's in um, team discussions, maybe you're working on a, a ad hoc consulting group together. It's like you do a lot of work with a team as a business school student. So teamwork and collaboration with others, good leadership example to utilize um, here. It can also be around setting a vision for a team, um, achieving results. Mentorship is a great way to um, incorporate some, some leadership into this type of essay. Um, think again about what you're going to be doing as a student. Um, if you have additional work experience, um, say you have really focused um, work experience in like a very quantitative area, you might be in a class or in a study group with um, a student that has two years of work experience. Maybe you have eight years. So maybe you'll be able to give that type of student some additional perspective. Or maybe you have spent your entire career in finance and you're going to be in a study group with, with a liberal arts major who's been working as a journalist and who's really struggling with um, accounting or finance. You're going to be able to really mentor and help that student. So mentorship is another great area to be, to be highlighting here. Um, listening to others, motivating others, compromising, boosting morale. It's, um, we have never worked with a client who cannot identify a leadership experience, um, even those that come to us initially and say, I don't really have anything. You don't want to spend um, your entire essay here talking about the leadership experience. Instead, um, be, be sure to talk about how you approach the experience. Um, that's like your thought process behind um, the leadership experience is almost more important than the leadership experience itself. Um, e it is also quite critical that you talk about the impact that you had. Um, if you can quantify that impact, all the better. And then most importantly, what did you learn and how can you leverage this in the future? If your prior experience is indicative of what you will do in the future, then talking about how you'll be able to fully leverage the experience in the future to contribute to the program or to contribute to your future career draw the connection for admissions officers. You can cover both um, strengths as well as weaknesses when you're discussing your personal development. Um, certainly your strengths are an, an obvious area to, to discuss. Um, it's those areas that you feel like you'll be able to really draw most heavily on and contribute um, in, 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 in a program like Tuck. Um, 
Weaknesses are those areas that are in need of some refinement in order to achieve your career goals. Um, quantitative skills, qualitative skills, whatever they are, hopefully um, these are not glaring weaknesses. You don't want to highlight um, real deficiencies in your application, of, of course. Um, but if you can um, highlight some weaknesses, but then also say, well, these are weaknesses, but here's what I've been doing to start addressing these weaknesses in advance of, of coming to Tuck, then, then all the better. Admissions officers know you're already on the path to refining your skills. Um, they're not just weaknesses that you have identified where there's no action plan to really correct them or, or address them. With the optional essay, um, Tuck's asking to provide any additional insight or information that you have not addressed elsewhere that may be helpful in reviewing your application unusual choice of evaluators, weaknesses in academic performance, unexplained job gaps or changes, et cetera. Complete this question only if you feel your candidacy is not fully represented by this application. That second part to the optional essay question is, is quite important because you really only want to utilize this essay for extenuating circumstances. Um, maybe you have um, weaker uh, academic um, performance, GPA or, or GMAT. Um, maybe you feel like your analytical or quantitative skills aren't where they um, should be or they're not um, representative of your um, GPA or, or your GMAT score. If you have a gap in your work experience um, that is a bit glaring and might need some explanation or if you're not getting a letter of recommendation from your direct supervisor, these are all um, good reasons to, to utilize an optional essay. With the optional essay, just keep it short and to the point. Um, you, you do not want to be making excuses. If your undergraduate GPA is on the lower end, don't talk about, you know, don't get too much into the detail of, of what was going on. Maybe uh, just, you know, state it as it is and talk about what you have done to correct or improve upon any deficiencies or red flags. So if you have a lower GPA, you can say, um, say you had some difficulty making the transition to college in terms of the rigor of the coursework, you could say, well, as you see through my transcript, I did have um, a continued improvement in my performance between sophomore, junior, and senior year. Um, or you could say things like, um, my GMAT score is not reflective of my analytical and quantitative abilities as evidenced by X, Y, and Z. X being my um, highly quantitative nature of my job, Y being my undergraduate GPA, Z being this additional coursework coursework I took in accounting or finance. So like, just keep it very simple, straightforward. Do not dwell too much um, on this essay and, and do not make um, excuses with it. So finally, I just wanted to um, leave you with some advice um, in terms of next steps. What, what should you do now to really get started with your, with your Tuck essays and with your other essays that you're um, planning on, on writing for your other applications to business school? So um, can't, can't uh, say it enough, but following instructions, make sure that you're um, answering the question to its fullest extent. Make sure you're answering all parts of the question. Make sure you're staying within the word limit, plus or minus. Um, answer that question directly to the point. Be engaging or interesting with your essays. Open your essays with something that really catches the reader's attention. These admissions officers review thousands of application essays, all the same essay questions. So you have, to, you have to think about it from their perspective. They're just reviewing the same response over and over and over and over and over again. Why is your essay going to be something that when they read that first sentence or two, they're like, ooh, this is kind of an interesting one. I'm actually going to really focus on it as opposed to having their eyes glaze over with another essay that looks just like the last um, three or 400 that they've reviewed. Um, you can be creative with your essays to a certain extent. Don't go overboard with the creativity. Um, but if the essays are reflective of your voice and you're more creative and you want to go in that direction, I would, I would strongly um, encourage you to, to do so. Um, and then uh, think also about relying on examples. You know about those differentiators, those three or five qualities that you're going to try to highlight. Um, have it be a mix of both professional as well as personal, if, if possible. And then finally, um, proofread and iterate your essays. Your essays can take a fair amount of time to get where they need to be um, and really polish them, but do not over-polish them. Um, you want to not lose your voice. If you edit them and edit them and edit them, 
over time that your voice is just going to get lost. And, and so edit them to the point where they are where they need to be, but then move on to the other parts of the application. So just to um, wrap up, we ran through a lot of information today on, on Tuck. We started with your goal with the application essays. We talked about how to strategically approach the writing process. We analyzed both questions as well as the optional essay. And then we wrapped up with some uh, high-level um, next steps on, in terms of how you can uh, get started. So just for those of you that um, joined this presentation a little bit late, um, uh, two quick housekeeping items, and then um, if you have questions, please start chatting them over if you haven't already done so, and I'll, I'll answer as many of them as, as time allows. But you're welcome to download a copy of this presentation from our website, um, learnmore.acceptyou.com slash tuck. And then I'd encourage all of you either viewing this live today or uh, perhaps viewing the recording um, in, the, in the future um, to sign up for an admissions assessment with one of AcceptU's former MBA admissions officers. Um, you get some strong feedback on your candidacy. We can talk about potential essay topics. Um, we can really, we, prov we think, given the fact that all of our counselors are former admissions officers, provide real insight into how you can differentiate yourself in the process and be most successful in um, uh, getting admitted to the business schools that you want to attend. So. With all that said, we've got some time now for um, your questions, and it looks like they're um, already coming in. Um, there's a question here about um, if your GPA is lower than average, should you highlight it in the optional essay, even if there are really no extenuating circumstances? For example, would writing about how that has affected your career and how you've had to work to overcome it be a good topic, or should you just leave it alone so there, uh, leave it alone if there were no mitigating sob story circumstances? Um, that's a, that's a really um, good question. If your GPA is lower than average, but there really weren't any extenuating circumstances, um, you don't want to necessarily draw undue attention. Um, it depends on how low you, your GPA is. Um, if your GPA is uh, um, significantly lower than the um, average uh, uh, incoming student, then I would utilize the optional essay because you don't want them to look at your GPA and immediately just dismiss your application, um, which if your GPA is low enough, they may very well um, kind of give your application a quick read. Um, but I would not focus an entire essay on um, you know, having to overcome this, this weakness in your preparation for applying to business school. That's just dwelling a little bit too much on it, but you, you might want to utilize um, uh, you might want to utilize the optional essay if your GPA is, is significantly lower. If your GPA is just slightly lower, then sometimes writing an optional essay about that could draw undue attention to an area where admissions officers really didn't care much about to begin with. Um, a question here about what constitutes academic excellence? Does it go beyond GPA? I think that's a great um, question. Academic excellence um, very broadly would be comprised of both your GPA as well as your GMAT score. Now, GPAs can be a little bit um, misleading, and this might tie into the previous question, because a GPA is not just a GPA. You might look at the average GPA at Tuck and say, well, my GPA is about where that is, or a little lower, or a little higher. But admissions officers are looking at a GPA um, not just as a number, but also based on where the applicant has gone to, to school, what the applicant um, has majored in, what the applicant has studied. That's why you have to provide your entire academic transcript um, as part of the application process. So um, if your GPA is a little on the lower side, a little on the higher side, right on track, that's, that's fine for you to assess. But understand that admissions officers go much deeper with the review of your GPA. And then also um, uh, think about how your um, GMAT score can either be used to support your GPA or offset a lower GPA. Um, but in sum, GPA, GMAT is, is essentially what we're talking about when it comes to academic um, qualifications. Um, in your experience, is Tuck open to considering candidates that are taking courses in order to address a low GPA? I think that that's a great way for you to potentially um, mitigate a lower GPA. Um, is by taking additional coursework in more analytical or quantitative areas, um, uh, finance, accounting, economics. Those are probably the three areas that I would recommend. 
um, you be taking classes in. Um, it doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't matter that uh, you know, where you take these classes. It's much more important that you do as well um, as you as you can um, in them. If you do well in those courses, you're going to provide a transcript to talk um, beyond what you're providing uh, with your undergraduate um, transcript, and it can certainly be used to um, offset that. There was a question about um, the Tuck Bridge program. How heavily does that weigh into the admissions process? Um, I mean, if you if you performed well there, clearly that's an indicator that um, you're academically going to be where you need to be. Um, also, it, you can be used to demonstrate interest in, in the school um, because obviously you've already taken uh, or gone through a program at, at Dartmouth. So I, I would say it's, it's, it can be moderately helpful. Um, I don't think that it's very heavily weighted. And it's certainly if you were not in that type of program, um, there are many other um, factors that um, the admissions officers would also probably weigh um, much more heavily than um, than say their, your involvement in, the, in a previous um, program. Um, is Tuck more competitive than its peers because of its relatively small intake? Um, in part, I mean it is a, it is a smaller it is a smaller program. I think it's also it just attracts a certain type of applicant. At least in in our experience um, here at um, except you, uh, it's, um, there's just a, there's a, there's a very kind of particular type of applicant that's interested in TUC, at least those applicants that we've worked with that are um, admitted to that, to that program. So I think that it's, um, it's competitive because it's, it's a very kind of um, unique environment and, and it attracts a very kind of unique type of applicant. So less than, less so than in terms of its um, in size. Essay gimmicks that backfired. Um, there, um, the the biggest mistake that you can make as an applicant is um, writing an essay that you think admissions officers want you to write. And and I mentioned it earlier, but it, it's worth it's worth just mentioning it again um, because it it really is an easy way for you to come across as a phony or inauthentic in your in your application essay. So do not sit there in front of your computer and say, hmm, I wonder what an admissions officer is going to want for me to say uh, in this essay, and then try to write an essay that way. You should write what you want to write. You've gotten some good um, insight into the process that you should be taking. Write the essay from who you are, and, and write the essay from um, your perspective as opposed to from the perspective of, of an admissions officer, because if you take that admissions officer approach, it's just not going to work, and it's a it's a pretty quick way for um, admissions officers to to move on to um, the the next applicant. So, with all of that said, um, I think that we have to wrap up now. But I would invite those of you that are viewing this live to join us at a, a chat party on the Tuck um, wall on Beat the GMAT. Um, either I or another of my colleagues here at Except You will be available to answer any additional questions that you have about Tuck. Um, and if you um, haven't already, I'd encourage you to both download a copy of this presentation from our website, as well as sign up for an admissions assessment with one of ExceptU's former MBA admissions officers. We'll be doing um, webinars um, through the fall with Beat the GMAT, so please continue to um, stay in the loop there. Um, but otherwise, I want to thank you all for the great questions. Thank you all for joining us today with this Tuck essay analysis, and look forward to seeing you at future webinars. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.